In this video, we're going to learn how to use partial truth tables to determine whether a woof is a tautology, a contradiction, or whether arguments are valid. If you remember in the last video, we had a gigantic, nasty truth table with tons of numbers that was really hard to work through to check to see whether an argument was valid or not. But wouldn't it be much better if we could just make one row instead of eight, or instead of four, or instead of 16? That's what we're going to learn here. So you'll be able to solve these by the end of the video, and a solution video will be posted within 24 hours. So what is a tautology? Remember, a tautology is a well-formed formula that is always true. So if we want to check for something that is, a, that is a tautology, what we can do is we can do something a little bit trickier. We can try to make a row that is false. So for instance, if I have P and P arrow Q arrow Q, well, here's the main connective, right? It's the arrow before Q. So what if we just tried to create a row that was false? And if it's impossible to create that row, then what that means is it's impossible to have a row that's false, therefore every row must be true. So if this is impossible, we know it's a tautology. So how do we do this? Well, this is a zero, right, for a conditional. What does that mean? That means if we have a conditional, the only time a conditional is false is if we have one arrow zero. So what this means is if the conditional here is false, Q must be zero and P and P arrow Q must be true. So we could put a true under the and here. Okay, now what about this and here? You know, we're done with Q on the right, the conclusions fit in. We have a value for Q now, so we can keep track of this. We've determined that Q is false. Okay, P and P arrow Q. Well, when is AND true? AND is true only if we have 1 and 1. So that means that P must be 1 here, and P arrow Q must be 1. So we've determined here that the value of P is equal to 1. So we've got this by saying Q is 0 and P is 1, because in order for these things to be true, these are the assignments we must meet, which means that we can fill in the values of P and Q at this point. We know P is 1, we know Q is zero. Oh no, oh no, this is not good. Look, now we have, now we have one arrow zero. But we have here that this has to be true. But we, we know this can't be true because we have one arrow zero, so this must be a zero. So what we're saying simultaneously is that this has to be true and false at the same time in order to make this work. In order for this entire well-formed formula to have a false row, we end up with some connective that has to be true and false at the same time. So this point, uh, this, this is an impossible situation to construct. It's impossible to have this conditional be true, but to also have P be true and Q be false. Therefore, because we found that it is impossible, it is impossible to construct this row, so this idea that we have here, uh, 1, 0, because we have an impossibility here, we know that it is impossible at all to have this initial assignment. So that is an impossible assignment. It is impossible for a row to be false. Therefore, every row must be true. And therefore, this formula is a tautology. Let's do one more example. P arrow Q and not Q gives us not P. We want to show this is a tautology. So what we do is we say, okay, I'm going to assume that this conditional is false. So that means that we're going to have one arrow zero. So not P will be false, and then P arrow Q and not Q will be true. Okay, so if not P is false, that means that P is true. So we know at this point that P has to be one in order for this hypothetical situation to be a true thing that can happen. So we also have the one and one. So we know that if we have P arrow Q and not Q, and that's true, that means P arrow Q has to be true. And that means not Q has to be true. So if we have not Q is true, that means that Q is false. So we know then that Q is false. At this point, we can plug in our values for P, which is true, and Q, which is false, and we run into the exact same situation again. 
because we needed to have p arrow q is true, but p is 1 and q is false. So q is 0, therefore it should be 0 here. Therefore, that is an impossible assignment. We cannot make a row that is false. Therefore, this is a tautology because we know that every single row then must be true in order for this to work. So that's how we do a tautology. And it's going to be the same process for a contradiction. But this time we're just uh, with a contradiction. Remember, a contradiction, every single row is false. So we're going to try to construct a row that is true and show that it's impossible to make a row that's true. So p and not p, we want to show, we want to assume that some row is true, and we're going to show it's impossible. So we need to have one and one for the and to be true. That means that p is true and not p is true, but that gives us that p would happen to be false, which means here that in order for this row to be true, we need to have p equals one and p equals zero true at the same time, and that was incredibly messy. So let me rewrite this. Uh, p would have to be true and false at the same time, therefore this is impossible. It is impossible to have a truth value or an atomic proposition that has two different truth values at once. So therefore it is impossible to construct a true row, therefore every row must be false, which means that what we have here is a contradiction. Okay, what about not p arrow q arrow p? So we want to assume that this whole thing is true. We want to construct that row and show that it's impossible for it to be the case. So if not p arrow q arrow p is true, this means that p arrow q arrow p must be false. And remember, it's only false when we have one arrow zero, so that means that p has to be true, and q arrow p has to be false. Well, we run into the same thing here. We have to have one arrow zero, which means q is true, and that means that p is false. But now we have a problem because we have p is true and we have p is false at the same time. And this is impossible. It has to be the same in a row. Therefore, we cannot have this case. This is impossible. It is impossible to construct a row where this well-formed formula is true. Therefore, this is a contradiction. Now, that's tautologies and contradictions. Because we know how to do those, we can now do validity. Because remember, a valid argument is basically just a tautology in disguise. What you do is you take premise number one, you take premise number two, you take the conclusion, and you put them together. So P1 and P2, arrow C, this should be a tautology according to the definition of a valid argument. Therefore, all we have to do is we just have to assume there's some false row and show that this is impossible to construct. If it's impossible, we know every row must be true, therefore we have a valid argument. That'll be a billion times faster than what we did in the previous video with the giant grid of like, say, I don't know how many numbers there were, but there was definitely over a hundred ones and zeros in that grid. Now we only have to deal with uh, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 of those. So once again, we have to have one arrow zero here. So that means P or R and P arrow Q will be one. And that means Q or R is zero. We finally get to do something with the disjunction. So we know Q or R is false only when we have zero or zero. So that means Q is zero and that means R is zero. Okay, so I can fill this in actually. I can put a zero under Q, I can put a zero under R. Everything looks okay now. Uh, I have to have one and one for this to work. So P or R should be true. P arrow Q should be true. Okay. So at this point, we have to be a little bit creative because in this case, we have blank or zero. We have something or zero, but this has to be true, right? P or R has to be true. Therefore, if R is false, we know that P has to be true in order to make this true. So we have to assign a one here for P, which means that we now know the value of P we know the value of r, we know the value of q. So we can fill in this p here. p has to be 1. <laughs> oh wait, look, that doesn't work then, because if we have 1 arrow 0, we should have 0 instead of 1. Therefore, this is impossible. It is impossible to construct a row that is false in this truth table. Therefore, every row must be true. Therefore, this is a tautology. 
And because this is a tautology that represents this argument, we know therefore that this is a valid argument because it is impossible to have a case where p1 and p2 is true and c is false. Uh, this thing is impossible to happen. So that's it for tautology contradiction and validity with partial truth tables. I'll be honest with you, and I think this is something that you have to just internalize. This is not something that you can learn in an 11 minute video. If you can master this in one watch through of this 11 minute video, you are abnormal in the best way. But for most of you, for 99% of all of us, we cannot master this concept in 11 minutes. Uh, so what I want you to try to do is give these two attempts your best shot. There'll be a solution video in 24 hours where we'll go over the solutions. And definitely if you're in a real class, practice as much as you can. The more practice you get, the better you are at this. So if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them when I can.